Hey guys, welcome back to All in the Law. Today, this is a quick O B G Y M. And today, I'm going to talk about primary dysmenorrhea. Okay, primary dysmenorrhea, right? Name itself indicates primary. The cause is not known. Uh, the cause primary means there is no pathological cause. Remember, secondary means there is a cause like endometriosis. Primary, there is no pathological cause. Pelvic pathology is normal, but they have dysmenorrhea. There is a pain during menstruation. Okay, that's the definition. So. It's nothing but what you call a recurrent, crampy, recurrent, crampy, lower abdominal pain. Okay, and with this, they have the abdominal pain. They will have a nausea, vomiting, and the diarrhea can be there. That occurs during, very important, is a menstruation. Okay, and remember for a primary, it, the, the pelvic pathology is normal, so no pelvic pathology. Okay, so it's a recurrent crampy lower abdominal pain that occurs during a menstruation with normal pelvic pathology. Okay. And remember, this is the most common gynecological complaint in adolescent females. Okay. Right. So, let's talk about what you call, what happens, findings. The onset of pain generally does not occur until the all eight menstrual cycles are established. Okay. The maturation of, you know, if this is the brain. Okay, Einstein brain. Then they have a hypothalamus. Oh, let me draw like this. Mm, hypothalamus, pituitary. This is hypothalamus. This is pituitary. Okay. And the gonads. Ovary. Ovary. Ovary is O O ovary. Remember. Because they are in what you call early 8 years, 10 years, okay, before the maturation, the only feedback, what you call maturation, the, the what you call, um, the feedback mechanism working the, between the hypothalamus and the pituitary, that's it. So when they start menstruation, the menstruation cycle starts, now the another thing has to be get involved, that's the ovary, right? That's the ovary. So this is how this there should be a maturation of what you call hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis leading to the ovulation, right? So this is very important. This is maturating slowly. This is a maturation. So to maturate completely, like an adult woman, it will take around two years. Two years, okay? Within two years of a post menarche, what you call, okay? And sometimes it can take up to five years also, but two years is the ideal, right? Now the symptom begins uh, several hours prior to the onset of uh, menstruation and continues for one to three days. So you have to typically ask the okay, uh, detailed history, okay? It begins within a, what you call hours, several hours prior to the onset of menstruation. And it should continue for what you call um, one to three days, okay? If you want to, what you call, ask the, what you call, um, grade the pain, you can ask the patient from one to ten, okay? One, ten being the very severe, okay? One being the very mild. So, grade the pain, they can grade from moderate to severe, okay? Right, now what's a pathogenesis what happens as I said this is a development of this 
excess hypothalamic pituitary excess maturation okay it's because of you know um, corpus luteum involutes corpus luteum involutes okay and there's a progesterone withdrawal progesterone withdrawal okay and the spiral arterioles spiral arterioles the spiral arterioles arterioles constrict and get what you call necrosis okay constricts they get constrict and necrosis occurs last ultimately when this leads to the formation of what you call prostaglandin prostaglandin f2 alpha that's it and this the prostaglandin cause what you call uh, dysarrhythmic uh, uterine contraction hypercontractility increase ut uterine muscle tone leading to uterine ischemia okay and because of this pgrf2 alpha the patient might complain of uh, nausea and abdominal pain okay and vomiting can be there so right so and sometimes the patient can also complains of diarrhea okay and um, now how do you manage this management you know very well pg2 alpha suppressors like suppression of the prostaglandins is the main treatment of this so NSAIDs can be given okay or a prostaglandin synthetase inhibitors are the first choice of treatment for this NSAIDs are the treatment of choice so continuous combination of estrogen progesterone steroid agents like oral contraceptives are second choice for suppressing prostaglandin release so you can give estrogen progesterone contraception uh, but NSAIDs are the first line of treatment for this okay guys so this is a brief discussion about uh, primary dysmenuria thank you so much for watching this video take care